They arrived brainwashed by the strength of the idea, the fact of Batman. I mean, the, the bat sign goes up in the sky at night, and that's a signal to Batman to come and help the commissioner. I mean, come on, if you're going to commit to that, you know that it's a little off the wall. So you arrive, as they did, ready to pretend and be a restrained farceur. That's what they did, and that's what they were. Yeah, they were great. George, George Sanders was in one of them that I was in. I don't think I worked with uh, Cesar Romero. I think he was on other shows, but I knew him from shows at Disney, and of course he did the Joker. Was it the Joker? Yes. Yeah, he did the Joker right on the money. Vivid, over the top, appropriate, oddly believable. I mean, Jack Nicholson as the, as the Joker was four times bigger than any performance and yet somehow believable. Wait till they get a load of me. You know, you just believe. It's so preposterous. And I don't know what we're watching. I don't know if we're watching. I don't know. It's, a, it's separate from all the other everything. It's just separate. It's crazier. It's not as real. And yet, we join it and follow it and participate in it to the same extent and more so than we do the other things. Why? What are we doing? I don't know. I don't know. What about Frank Gorshin? Great. Did a lot of nightclubs, a lot of singles. So he had worked, <clears throat> pardon me, in front of an audience a lot from which anyone learns an immense amount. Very skillful, very crafty guy and committed. I mean, he, he would make an entrance and it would sort of knock you off your feet. You know, you wouldn't think, you wouldn't say, is he kidding? But that would be your first thought because it was so big and so vivid and so committed and specific. And you won't go, wait a minute. I believe that. That's right in this concept, in this context. No, he, he was terrific. Good guy, good guy that for some reason that the preposterous on that of, of that show reduced everybody to being cooperative and subservient. I think the idea was so crazy and so immense that we all just went with it. You know, directorially, performance, everything. Oh, I had known him before on other shows. I knew he was a zany, ultra-committed ex-comic comic or current comic. So I knew it would be ultra vivid. So I was certainly prepared for that. And he, having worked with me, trusted me. So I don't remember any specific direction, but um, it would be very comfortable for me to speak to him about a point. Frank, mechanics, I mean, he didn't, mechanics were no problem. Don't drop to your knees until after you've said such and such. That's no problem for him, good physical guy. He was always behind the effort. He didn't work from inside particularly. He just was a performer. But his stuff, when he worked, between him and his work, it was very organic. Because, boy, when he got excited over, over confusing Batman, we remember how vividly he giggled at the thought of thwarting back Batman and putting him off. He just went bozo. And it was terrific. And I don't think I ever said, Frank, cool it. Let's, let's shrink it a bit. Because, I mean, here he is in his green mask and tights and everything. I, no, I don't remember shading any of that at all. I think I'd known him on Hennessy. And, I mean, we worked legitimately, you know, a director to actor then. But Batman was a different animal. I mean, boy, you just went in there, pulled jumped and pulled the ripcord and off you went. That's the feeling of everybody, I think. That's what you were watching on film, this spirit, this, this freedom, this release of everything we, we'd been taught, you know. It's funny. Um, episodes three and four introduced uh, Burgess Meredith as the Penguin. Um, the first day when he waddled out there on the set or just appeared in his costume, was he doing it? Was he already Absolutely. 
I remember consciously thinking, this guy knows most of the answers about performing and has been most of the places one performs. Because that was suddenly French farce or Commedia dell'arte or something. And he had the, the cigarette holder <laughs> and he kept drooling. I mean, how could you not play a scene? And, and I said, uh, he, everybody called him Buzz, Meredith Buzz. I said, Buzz, it's, it's a little juicy, man. I don't think it can be that juicy. And his answer was, well, uh, I don't know. And that was kind of the end of it. And whether he used a handkerchief or I don't know what happened, but we didn't, we didn't ever get any juice for the audience. <laughs> yeah, they were, they were all that, that way, particularly the mature, the mature performers who knew the different styles and, and degrees that uh, acting encompasses. They were great.